Hey everybody, Attorney Sam here. Welcome back. With 2021 drawing to a close, it's once again time for me to identify my top 10 red wines of the year. I'm going to count these down from number 10 to number 1. At number 10 is the incredible 1971 Giacomo Conterno Barolo. 1971 was an excellent vintage in Piedmont, and this is an extraordinary wine from a classic producer of Barolo. This wine was still showing incredibly well. It had a ton of sediment, and I was concerned with it falling off, so rather than decanting the wine, we poured it directly into the glass through a filter, and that's a technique that works very, very well for me for older wines. But this wine was extraordinary. Dried sour cherries, dried violets, leather, truffle, earth, poison, and tar were readily apparent. At this stage, the tannins were fully resolved and there was substantial acidity to balance the flavors. This was definitely a special wine from a classic producer. Coming in at number nine was the Diamond Creek Volcanic Hill wine, which is a Napa Cabernet Sauvignon. 1994 is one of my all time favorite vintages in Napa, and this wine was showing extremely well. It featured a magical mix of black and blue fruit, leather, cedar, tobacco, lead pencil, and dried herbs, and it was perfectly balanced by ample acidity. It was intensely concentrated, yet elegant. Coming in at number 8 was the 2006 Domaine de la Romani Conti Von Romani Premier Cru Cuvée du Vault Locher. This wine is produced using younger vines from Echezo, Grand Echezo, Romani Saint Vivant, and Richebourg. While it took a while for this wine to open up, following a 90-minute decant, it really started coming to life. The wine was vibrant and incredibly expressive at that point. Dark cherry, black raspberry, Asian five spice, and floral notes were the dominant descriptors. This wine was intensely concentrated, yet remarkably elegant. It reminded me of an Echezo, but with more prominent tannins. Coming in at number seven was a Mounier Chambol Moussigny Premier Cru from 2007. We had this wine along with the DRC as part of a burgundy tasting. And to my surprise, this wine beat the DRC head to head. This was just really an incredibly elegant ethereal wine that was really in a remarkable place. It featured beguiling aromatics of sweetened red black cherries, raspberry, strawberry, violet, truffle, and hints of sage in Asian five spice. The fruit was just incredibly pure and ethereal and elegant. Really a remarkable, astonishing wine. This wine will only improve with age, so it's definitely one to track down and purchase if you get a chance to do so. Coming in at number six was the 2000 Chateau Cheval Blanc. This wine is sultry, seductive, and sexy. This was an absolute joy to taste. Black currant, black cherry, black plums, violets, licorice, menthol, tobacco, and wet earth were all readily apparent. While it took a while for this wine to open up, when it did, it unfolded furled majestically. It was rich, regal, and generous. This is definitely a wine that should be in the conversation for the top five or ten Chateau Cheval Blancs ever produced. It was simply that good. Coming in at number five was the 1986 Chateau Mouton Rothschild. If this wine were a movie, it would have been fast and furious. This was a full throttle, intense, powerful wine. It kept gathering momentum and it effortlessly passed the formidable competition that it faced that night. The beguiling bouquet included the expected black currant, blackberry, pencil lead, tobacco, forest floor, and cedar, but there was much more. Licorice, menthol, Asian five spice, soy sauce, earth, violet, and black truffle. As impressive as the aromatics were, the palate was even better. Truly a magical wine that was still shockingly youthful. Coming in at number four was the 2005 Chateau Reyes. This is a Chateauneuf du Pot that is 100% Grenache. Reyes is always such a treat to taste. When you blind it, it seems a little bit like a tense, concentrated burgundy, but yet there's a little bit more spiciness to it. Initially reticent, this wine exploded in the glass with a couple hours worth of air. The fruit is just incredibly pure. Raspberry and wild strawberry were accompanied by licorice, garrigue, and hints of cedar. There was ample acidity to balance the intense fruit and the tannins. The finish was long and complex. Simply a breathtaking wine. If you haven't yet had an opportunity to try Chateau Reyes, this is definitely a worthy wine for your bucket list. Coming in at number three was the 1990 Chateau Aubryon. Earlier this year we did a 1990 Bordeaux tasting, a horizontal tasting, where we tasted all the first gross, Chateau Cheval Blanc, and a few other top wines from the 1990 vintage. This Aubryon was certainly one of the stars that night and one of the stars of last year. It is often overshadowed by the 1999 Aubryon, which is of course legendary, but this 1990 is simply outstanding in its own right. And you can pick up multiple bottles of this 1990 for the price of one of the 1989s. This wine is powerful yet elegant. Everything is completely harmonious. 
But as good as the 1990 Aubryon was, the Chateau Lafitte Rothschild was a little bit better. And that wine actually was the victor in the 1990 Bordeaux tasting that we did, with seven out of eight tasters identifying that as the top wine. Of course, with Lafitte, it's not about power, it's about elegance. And this wine was just remarkably elegant. Aristocratic aromatics of black currant, black cherry, tobacco, cedar, lead pencil, and truffle were all readily apparent. But the palate was the real showstopper here. There were layers of complex cedar-infused fruit that coated your palate with a rich, silky mouthfeel, like a cashmere sweater on a cold winter day. The finish was incredibly long and complex. Just a breathtaking wine. Coming in at number one was the legendary 1982 Chateau Pichon Lalande. The first time I ever tasted this wine was about 10 years ago. I was absolutely blown away by it. It simply outclassed every other wine I'd ever tasted to that point in my lifetime. It was just in a league of its own, and to this day, it remains one of my all time favorite wines. This wine has oftentimes proved the adage that there's no such thing as a good wine, only good bottles. Fortunately, however, with one sniff, we instantly knew that this bottle was one of the good ones. A captivating kaleidoscope of black and red flute exploded from the glass, along with a mix of cedar, graphite, and beguiling floral aromas. As amazing as the aromatics were, the palate was even better. Silky, supple, sensual, and elegant. Each glorious sip delivered layer after layer of complex flavors. The fruit was astonishingly pure with graphite and cedar infusion. The finish was absolutely breathtaking. When you have a great bottle of 1982 Pichon Lalande, it can simply overpower your senses like few wines can. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please let me know in the comments below. Please also let me know what your favorite wine was for 2021. I'll be back with another video in the near future. Until then, drink well.